Greetings from Aotearoa, New Zealand. I'm Anne. And I'm Bruce. We're global servants through American Baptist International Ministries, and we'd like to welcome you to this special celebration of our dear Dr. Marion Baer. I know that all of us have come together from locations around the world to remember and celebrate the life of an extraordinary child of God. Like a diamond with many facets, Marion's life has touched each of us in different ways. And so we gather here to listen to stories and remember and praise God for the person that we've known as Reverend Dr. Marion Baer, Baer Amagaru, Dr. Ama, Marion, Aunt Marion, or as she signed off in one of her Easter emails, your little friend, Marion Baer. Well, back in 1985, when a missionary came to visit our vineyard class, uh, there's a Sunday school class here at First Baptist, little did we know that that encounter would change the direction of our whole lives. We expected a tall, stony-faced woman with a gray bun spouting scripture at us, and instead, in waltzed a petite, energetic Dr. Marion Bear, who had just arrived from India for a visit to her home church. Marion began our class by showing us ads that she'd cut out from the Oregonian newspaper. She'd circled the words, eat, buy, big discounts, <laughs> indulge yourself in red. And she told us how ads like these drove her crazy every time she returned to the U.S. They made her think of people she knew and worked with in India who were fortunate if they had one good meal a day and a dry place to sleep. Marion reminded us all that being a Jesus follower is more than just going to church on Sunday. Following Jesus means living a transformed life that serves those less fortunate and changes their situations. Well, Marion became Aunt Marion to Aunt our Marian. family <laughs> and graciously agreed to be a founding member of our missionary partnership team in 2004. She always sent us words of encouragement and love. And when we went through some rough spots in our ministry, she was there as our counselor and mentor. You know, C.S. Lewis once said, joy is the serious business of heaven. Marion showed us that kind of joy. She was always having her socks knocked off. <laughs> and an item that she couldn't correctly name, it was always a uh, woozy watsy. <laughs> In March 2020, as the global pandemic was darkening all our thoughts, Marion sent us an email full of news and encouragement, and it ended like this. She wrote, I entertain people with my poetry, which I make up, and so here's one. It's called My Mattress and I. Night after night, for years on end, my mattress has been my closest friend. My mattress and I are cozy and pally. There are hills on the sides and I sleep in the valley. It clearly shows what shape I'm in. Where it is thin, I am thick. Where it is thick, I am thin. I'll miss my mattress when I am gone. It's the one thing I've made an impression on. <laughs> Marion, you made an impression on way more than your mattress. All of us here today can testify to that. Amen. We love you, Marion. You live on in our hearts. God bless you. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Daniel Plesha. I'm the uh, worship director here at First Baptist. And as we celebrate um, Doctor's life, I invite you to stand with me and sing one of her favorite hymns, My God and I. Heavenly plans were made for me to be. 
I had all these scripture verses marked out in the Bible, and as I strode up here, uh, the breeze flipped me away from my place. But we'll begin with hearing several brief passages from scripture which were important for Mary, and we know that her life and her faith were steeped in scripture. From Paul's epistle to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, the second uh, reading is from uh, the book of Lamentations. Uh, verses chapter 3 verses 22 and 23 and since that's somewhat of a dour book on the whole we wouldn't necessarily associate it with Marion but she found words of hope in Lamentations the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning great is your faithfulness Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, uh, chapter 9, uh, verse 15. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Amen to that. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And finally, from the psalmist, Psalm 94, verse 19. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. You know, I met Marion Bear sometime in the 1990s. I don't even know exactly when, uh, because I met her and yet I didn't meet her. I was a professor at Central Baptist Seminary in Kansas City, and there was a crowd of hundreds for our commencement 
and she was a commencement speaker. So I'm sure I introduced myself, shook her hand. Uh, I'm sure that she was uh, uh, gracious and responsive to me. But honestly, I don't remember. And then, beginning in 2007, I had the privilege of being her pastor here at First Baptist Church of Portland. And Carol and I had the privilege of becoming her dear friends. How many of us can say that? But to her, we were all special. Now, we could talk about uh, uh, Marion's mighty missionary works. And in the brief time allotted to me, I'll refer to that in a moment. But for many of us, our first impressions of Marion were she was small, she had a self-deprecating humor, uh, she said things that sometimes were funny, but other times they were just funny. <laughs> Did she really mean that? She had a host of stories, and uh, I trust maybe we'll share some of those in an informal way in the fellowship hall. Uh, I just think of two right now. Um, she spoke of being on one of her deputations, the house guest of the host pastor. So the pastor and his wife went out for an evening obligation and left her alone with two large dogs. She barricaded herself in the guest room that whole evening while the dogs scratched at the door. <laughs> but uh, that was Mary. Um, sometimes, uh, in addition to being uh, small, she just seemed a little goofy sometimes. But that smallness, kindness, funniness hid a core of steel. She loved to talk and, and she had some stuff to talk about. Her 38 years on the field as an international ministries missionary or global servant, Ray, that's the, the correct language now, but she went to a struggling, almost non-existent medical facility in India, and over that 30-year period, she built it up into a strong state-of-the-art, at least as that's uh, accessible in India, hospital with a core staff of doctors and physicians uh, who were trained Indian servants. And in addition to her work in the hospital, she um, uh, was beloved of the Indian Christians. You know that they ordained her to the gospel ministry because they had seen her as not just a medical healer, which she was, but uh, a healer of lives as a servant of Jesus Christ, as a leader of Christ church. As I think of the stories, uh, the other one I want to tell is, is uh, and there are various versions of this story, uh, but she often talked about the extreme medical emergency she dealt with under the hardest of conditions, doing operations with a flashlight when the power went off, uh, uh, doing medical treatments of diseases that had never been heard of uh, in uh, U.S. medical schools or medical practices, and she said, I would uh, work on the patient's needs with one hand and with the other hand, flip the pages of the medical book to see what I was doing. Amazing, amazing Marion. But here's... The last thing I want to say, like many of you, I could uh, talk until uh, the sun went down and came back up again. Um, but in addition to the 38,000 surgeries over 38 years as a medical missionary, 
do the math. She was in retirement almost 30 years here in First Baptist Church of Portland. And in this local church, which she and her family only became part of by accident, their first Sunday in Portland, they thought they were going to the Methodist church. And they said, what a wonderful service. Let's go back in the evening. But it is odd how much that preacher talked about the Baptists. <laughs> she was baptized as a believer in this church and received her call uh, in this church. But when she came back, she served this church for almost 30 years. She was a moderator uh, during some contentious times. And most of my ministry here was, was smooth and harmonious. But uh, as Pat Forrester and I were sharing uh, before the service, there were a couple of bumps along the way. Uh, Marion served during some hard times, some conflicted times in this church. But though she was small and petite, uh, that core of steel made her a marvelous leader for the local church and not just as moderator and member of the diaconate but as chair of the missions committee who knew more about that uh, as a leader in the downtown fellowship ministry that was carried on for many years and as a faithful volunteer in the drop-in center feeding ministry uh, one of the signature programs of this church so amazing and I would say to all of us here today, and that includes myself, who are sort of in that uh, retirement age demographic. I haven't managed to actually retire yet, but uh, if we're in that demographic, uh, Marion shows us that those can be the most fruitful years of our life in serving the Lord. And she served the Lord with every breath that was in her body, every thought that was in her mind, every feeling that was in her heart until the Lord called her home. Thank you and God bless you, Mary and Bear. It's hard to follow that witty pastor, isn't it? Let's have a prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come here and a part of us has heavy hearts because of the loss of someone that was dear and near to us and whom we cared for and loved, Dr. Marion Baird. We also come here with full hearts because of one's well-lived life of significance. For this we celebrate and we are joyful. We thank you for Marion's life as a missionary and one who lived and moved among us. We thank you for allowing us the privilege to be a part of her life in ministry and to walk with her in her life's experiences. We thank you that although we call this a passing from life, we have the promise that Marion is more alive now than ever before. She has been given new life in Christ with you in a place that you provided. We ask that the Holy Spirit, your comforter, be close to the family and loved ones and bring peace. Help us to take the steps to trust her into your hands, to the hands of a loving God, and know that she is experiencing eternal life. Now may the word shared in this service bring honor and glory to your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. My name is Ray Schooler, <clears throat> and I'm honored to be here today representing International Ministries. I serve on the home staff. David asked me earlier how long. It's been 14 years. I was on the board seven years before that, so I've been with this marvelous organization for about 20 years. On behalf of Reverend Sharon Cole, our executive director, CEO, our home staff, and missionary colleagues around the world, I bring you greetings and heartfelt condolences for your loss of your dear family member, for your colleague in ministry, and adopted aunt to many around the world, Dr. Marion Bear. I was privileged to meet Marion. In fact, the first time I met her was right here at her beloved First Baptist Church, Portland. She was always a joy to be with, 
always loved hearing her stories, most of all, always liked to hear her heart. She always had something going on in her heart, and she loved to talk about it. Marion, of course, was born in 1926, and she joined another one of our missionaries, Maureen Bryans, who was born the same year, 1926. They're commissioned to serve at the same time, and they served in the same country in India. They formed the 1926 Club. Maureen served in India and completed her ministry at another one of our very strong mission churches south of here, First Baptist Church, Pomona. When I brought words at Maureen's service in 2014, knowing that she and Marion were close friends, I contacted Marion and got a quote from her, a word from her, and brought her greetings at that service on behalf of her friend. And today, my friend, that greeting is returned, and it's completed, isn't it, as Maureen Bryans and Marion Bear are reunited together with Jesus in heaven. Can you imagine what kind of celebration that must be, this 1926 club getting together again? But you know, if you know those two ladies, you know they're not only the presented missionaries that they were, they had a feisty side to them too. And they were so close to one another. I understand the sparring could, could be quite intense at times. So Jesus may be serving as referee up there these days, keeping, the, keeping them calm and during this time in heaven. We don't do those things in heaven now, ladies. Calm down. Marion has been mentioned and will be mentioned more, wasn't tall in stature, but she did indeed cast a long shadow of significance in ministry and influence on so many lives. You know her impressive credentials. They've been stated and will be stated to 38,000 surgeries in 38 years or her countless sermons preached. Dr. Ben Chan, the area director for international ministries for India now, shares that she is considered a saint in the Telugu Baptist secular communities. And this deep respect was expressed in 2019 when they renamed one of the main streets Dr. Bear Road. When she was notified of this honor, she talked, she contacted myself and a few others on home staff and kind of quizzed us as if we were behind this in some way. Did we make it happen? But we was able to tell her we had nothing to do with it. This was not decided in a boardroom. It wasn't decided, decided in a staff meeting somewhere. Marion, this was decided from the people, the people whom you served the people whom you gave your life to, they're the ones that rose up and said, let's honor her in this way. Ben Chan goes on to add that for him personally, Dr. Marion Bear is his shero, his mentor, and a wonderful model of God's servant. International Ministries has three focus impact areas. Let me quickly just go through those and apply them to Marion's life. This the focus impact areas is really who we are and what we're about. This is what we do. First thing we do is we're about inviting people put to be disciples of Jesus. Marion, of course, was constantly sharing Jesus with her patients in India, with people she met wherever. Later at Holiday Park Plaza, she shared with me how she's sharing Jesus with her neighbors. She was a tireless witness for Jesus. She also, our second focus impact area, is proclaiming the reign of God for peace, justice, and the abundant life. She brought justice to thousands of patients who were otherwise medically underserved by bringing her skills to the medical procedures given to these people. Justice was brought to the people she served. Our third impact area is equipping the church to be fully engaged in global mission. Marion was always working to move the church locally and globally to be fully engaged to fulfill the Great Commission. Go and make disciples. Marion felt called early in her life to serve and she gave herself completely to serve well. She prepared well. She was an outstanding medical missionary she devoted herself to the people whom she served, and she turned her experiences in some of those very challenging times that David referred to into a life-giving 
ministry. In fact, in many ways, she and her colleagues of that era, that generation, set the high standard of service by which we still strive to perform today with our present missionary efforts. We at International Ministries are keenly aware that when we send a missionary to serve, the entire family becomes a part of the life and the experience. In this case, Marion's family and her church family served right along there with her for those 38 years when she was in India. My friends, on behalf of our staff and the board of directors, please know of our sincere appreciation for your family's service with the American Baptist Foreign Mission Society. We're honored by your family's service. To God be the glory. Amen. Dr. Marion Bear, my father Irwin's little sister, was born in a small rural Nebraska town on July 24, 1926. Marion's father was a country doctor, and her mother introduced their Mennonite farming community to much art and music. In 1940, during the Depression, the family moved to Portland. And at the age of 14, in this very church, Marion and her brother Irwin committed their lives to serving Jesus Christ. That legacy and faith is now shared through three generations to follow. During her years attending the University of Washington, Marion thought her future lay in teaching chemistry. But during her senior year, she felt a strong tug to attend medical school and become a missionary doctor. Marion was only 19 when she moved to Chicago to attend Northwestern Medical School as one of only a few women in her class. In 1952, still finishing her internship at Cook County Hospital in Chicago, Marion was appointed a missionary at the Northern Baptist Convention and started studying linguistics, culture of India, and the Hindu and Muslim faiths. In 1953, Marion was stationed in the South India city of Nellore. She served there in the American Baptist Hospital until her retirement in 1991, 38 years. Upon her arrival, it was a 50-bed hospital for women and children. Marion writes, I had a deep sense of gratitude that God had sent me, a woman, to India to care for women in seclusion whose religion and culture did not permit them to see or be touched by a male doctor. Her goal was to expand the hospital to include male patients. One day, who Marion, uh, Marion had treated, sent her very sick but very reluctant husband to the, to the clinic. Marion says she stretched the truth a bit and said she was actually a specialist in men's diseases. She removed a rather large gallstone, which she gave to the man to take home. He proudly displayed it to others, and that was Marion's breakthrough. She became known and pronounced as a male specialist. <laughs> Over the years, Marion battled heat, sickness, snakes, monkeys, and frequent power outages, especially on Saturday nights when the movie theaters opened. When Marion left India in 1991, the Baptist Christian Hospital had grown from 50 beds to 160, with 30 newborn cribs and a thriving nursing school for 60 students. It was left in the hands of a well-trained Indian staff. Upon returning to the States, Marion transitioned into speaking engagements throughout the United States. But she says the most precious job God gave her was to be a mentor to young adults in India and young missionary couples searching for direction. Mary told, Marion told of her journeys in her book, Medicine and Miracles Among the Multitudes. Marion finished the final chapters of her life at Holiday Park Plaza, where even into her 90s, she taught Bible studies, Vesper services, and spoke in the area. She states that her desire had always been to share the gospel until she dies. Well, Marion was promoted to heaven on Sunday, April 25th. Over her nearly 95 years, she touched tens of thousands of lives with God's love and God's grace. Marion is survived 
by Terry Bear, her niece, who we'll, speak, we'll hear from very soon, uh, myself, her nephew, David Bear, my wife of 45 years, Mary, our two daughters, Kate and Sarah, and their two fabulous husbands, Tyler and John, and my, fave, my five grandchildren. Our son, John-in-law, our son-in-law, John Davis, had the opportunity to visit the area in India where Marion served, and I've asked him to come and share some of those experiences with us now. Thank you. So I became a part of the Bear family uh, sometime in 2002 when I first started dating Sarah who was Marion's grandniece, I believe is the correct uh, connection. And Marion was at uh, these various family gatherings, and I think some of the comments made earlier about how uh, she would say things that were funny, and sometimes she would act kind of funny. Uh, and we knew she was this amazing missionary who had an impact in India, but by that time it was the 2000s, and you know we're young and in our 20s. So what I want to tell you is a little story just about how God weaved my story in with Marion's and I had the opportunity to experience the impact Marion has had on the world. Because around the same time, I had been going to a little church in West Lynn with about 100 people in it. And there's a couple guys there who always talked about going to India and supporting these villages and this ministry in India uh, in this town of Nalore. Now this is before I had met my wife, or soon, future to be wife, that I started hearing about Nalor in India and these guys that went over there and uh, would run leadership conferences and support uh, missionaries over there. And so when I married into the family, uh, about, I think it was about 10 years later, 2011, maybe Bob, and I, I had the chance to join uh, a group. And at that time I was still vaguely aware that this was the same community that Marion had served in. But until you're there, you don't really make this connection. So on one side of the family, we've got Marion and the Bear family, and Marion had served for 38 years. And then on my side of life, from this church I had gone to, I had these guys who went to India, and here we are both in Portland, Oregon. So I went there as a college student. I think I was a college student, or maybe in law school at the time. And the work there is an organization called Alma, which ministers, runs two orphanages, uh, one of them in the town of Nalore, and then ministers to the Telugu people and uh, the Inadi people who are the untouchables uh, in that area, meaning they do not receive social services. Uh, they're the lowest caste uh, in that community. And there's about 600 villages where individuals, usually about 20 to 50 people, live in villages on agricultural plantations, that, and they serve as the workers. Uh, on these plantations. And so this ministry uh, ministers to these villages, about 200. So we are in the south of India. You fly into Chennai, you drive four hours up to Nalor. We're in the south of India. Uh, you go to Nalor, which is a town now about four or 500,000, so it's grown significantly. Uh, very hot, so what you, read, what you may have read about being hot, it's quite hot there. We went in the, the, the cool season and it was in the 90s. Uh, and then we get in the uh, Jeep and we head out miles and miles and miles uh, into the bush, so to speak, and end up in, in what is essentially a garage uh, speaking to about 25 villagers. And uh, Rufus, uh, who runs the ministry there, is translating for us as we're talking, and all of a sudden, hands start going up. And it's kind of like, Rufus, what are you saying? And Rufus says, well, I was asking, I knew that you're part of the family of Dr. Bear, and I was asking how many people in this village had been operated on by Dr. Bear. And in this small garage, miles outside of Nalor, India, 20 years after Marion had left, hands were going up about the impact that she had had in that community. Um, the day Marion passed away uh, was April 25th, I believe. I texted a few of my uh, friends in India. I've had the opportunity to visit twice and to do some service there. We still regularly support ministries in Nalore, and a number of people in this room do. Uh, I, I texted uh, Rufus, the director of the ministry there. Uh, the next day, he, he sends me text messages which have uh, Marion's picture in the regional paper, celebrating, the very next day, celebrating the impact she had had. Uh, and then he sends me a video, because he had walked into his mom's room, and on the television, was a whole segment in their local news about the impact that Marion had had. And so it is really hard to understand sometimes when you meet somebody later in their life 
uh, after they've had their missionary career, after they've had the impact. So I hope that me sharing a little bit of, of what we still experience uh, to this day or what they still experience to this day uh, in that region. It's easy to hear 38,000 medical procedures and have it be meaningless, uh, but there are still individuals walking around uh, in Nalore, in the region of Andhra Pradesh, who have been served by Marion. I also want to recognize uh, in this room, we have a few people from uh, Andhra Pradesh and from Nalore. Uh, we have uh, Pastor Suda uh, Aparitha, who's from uh, Aloha and Hillsborough area, is a pastor out there, and his wife, uh, Monica. Uh, they are from Nalore. If you want to hear what it's like after the service, please talk to them. They'll talk to you about anything. They're just wonderful. Uh, so greetings are brought to you from their family uh, who knew Dr. Bear uh, and who send greetings and uh, want to let you know the impact that she had uh, in that region and on the world. Thank you. Well, howdy-do. <laughs> uh, I am I am niece Terry um, and David. Uh, we are here, closest relatives. She never married, as you well know, and she had uh, my big brother, her big brother Irwin, and we are his two kids. I first of all want to thank all of you for so much love and support this last year. I have been the one privy of going through so many of her things. And just last night, I ran across a file of her birthday cards from her 94th birthday. And she listed them all. She had 35 cards, plus emails, plus e-cards. She was so well loved. And thank you so much for her birthday and for this last year and beyond um, of your love and support of Marion. Uh, it was deeply appreciated. She documented everything and just it meant so much to her. I am her niece. She is my aunt. And I, I first realized that a lot of people call her aunt. And I have to say I was a little bit miffed by it. I go, I am the true niece. But I realized what a term of endearment that is of how much you love and respect and of her leadership and her mentoring through the years. So I'm very proud now to share the title of she's auntie to many. I really didn't know my aunt all that well when I was a child. She was this famous missionary in India who's doing amazing things. She left for the mission field about the time I was born. But in 1984, um, her mother, Jenny Bear, um, needed help. She was living in her own home, and Marion had promised her, her, her mama, Jenny, that she would uh, take care of her and let her live in her home as long as possible. And Jenny needed help um, in the weekends. We had a dear lady who took care of her during the day, but I would come in in the evenings and at, on the weekends and moved in. And uh, it allowed Marion to stay on the mission field for a few extra years. I didn't realize at the time that I was doing her a tremendous favor. I just thought, hey, I got free room and board. This is pretty cool. But um, she um, allowed her to stay on the field until she retired in 1991. In 1989, um, I had an invitation from her to, to come and, and visit her. She wanted a family member to experience what she, her life was like while she was still serving. So for her Christmas break, it was unprecedentedly cold in India that Christmas. It was 80 degrees and people were wearing stocking caps. Um, I, I flew via Singapore to, um, to Madras and our, our flight landed very late. Um, and I was one of the last people to get off the plane and get my luggage. And as I was going through customs, I think the, the, the gentleman was getting rather tired of searching luggage. And so he says, well, what do you have in your luggage? And I said, well, I've got Christmas goodies. And he didn't know what a goodie was, thank goodness. <laughs> so he just kind of let me go through. And what it was was a bunch of special food things so I could fix Aunt Marion a Christmas dinner. Uh, and her dear colleague, Doris, Doris Connie, I'm so glad that Maureen was mentioned. That 20, the 1926 club was very important to her, and those were such dear friends um, that were all born in 1926. So when I was in India, I got to witness firsthand her performing surgery, administrator, hosting Christmas parties for the nurses. It was a tireless job. She was always on. 
And I was just so impressed with what this miraculous woman was doing and to experience it firsthand. Before I left, Marion had said, oh, good, you're coming to India. What would you like to see when you come to India? I'd like to see the Taj Mahal. Apparently, I had not looked at a map of India for any time recently, because Nellore's down here, and Taj Mahal is in Agra up here. But bless her heart, we got in a plane and flew up to Delhi and took a train, a, a bus, to Agra. And we had the unfortunate privilege of sitting in the first seat of the bus, right behind the driver, and we could see what he could see, which was absolutely nothing. It was pea soup fog. It was so bad. We heard a couple of weeks later that a bus had actually gone off the highway on that same journey. But thank you, Lord, we made it. And uh, we got to have some nice little vacation time together uh, and then went and celebrated with missionaries in Mahabali Puram in south of India. It was just so special. But I realized what a special person this was that I had really not known until, um, until I experienced it firsthand. When Marion came home, she retired in 1991, I was still in the house, and we became roommates. And I learned a very fun side of her. She had a wonderful sense of humor and a wonderful curiosity for things. She always was interested in finding out how things worked or pointing things out, and just always had this wonderful curiosity. A few things you may not know about her. Number one, she loved a good murder. She loved murder mysteries. That was a shock at the plaza. They go, this nice, uh, you know, saintly woman loves a good murder. So Agatha Christie, Miss Marple, Hercule Perot, uh, Columbo, all of those, those were the best things there were to watch and read. She loved the Cat Who series. So she loved always that type of thing. just been talking here. She loved picnics. That was what she wanted every year for her birthday. Let's go on a picnic, especially up to Multnomah Falls. She loved that. She wanted hot dogs. Loved her hot dogs. She loved flowers. She had some beautiful roses at her house on Fowler Street and just always loved beautiful flowers. I want to thank Bruce Burgess for doing such a magnificent job of flowers. I told him that her favorite colors were purple and blue and I see them beautifully represented through all of these arrangements. Thank you, thank you, thank you, church family, for doing a magnificent job of representing. She would be so happy to be here. She would just be tickled pink. She really would love that. She loved, of course, Indian food, and what made Indian food fun was the hell pickle, hell fire pickle that she'd put on the Indian food. She loved, I realize that's sensitive, uh, she always loved to do that. So, you know, in conclusion, um, I just want to celebrate what a shero she was. What a magnificent woman, single and a woman for the mid 20th century to have the courage with God's guidance to, to follow her conviction, to follow her faith and to go courageously, fearlessly in this world. And as a woman leader, I am so proud to uh, be genetically connected with her. She's kind of the Wonder Woman <laughs> with her golden lasso. As she passed, I can hear her entering the pearly gates with the angels singing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. If any of you know her, she always had talked about her miracles and her praises through singing that. So thank you for this opportunity.
I gladly trust with thee. 
Amen. It's good to be together, right? It's really good to see everybody. Thank you for joining us today. And I want to give a special thank you to those that are joining us online and to those who will uh, participate in this service later on through YouTube or through a CD recording. We're glad that we can together bring honor to God and also celebrate the life of our loved one. Well, um, you know, the Borquist kind of stole my thunder, so I'm going to have to talk with them about that afterwards. I hadn't seen that video. But I don't know if everybody heard the words to the poem that uh, Anne read. So I'm going to go ahead and read them to you again, because I think, I think it's actually very important. Uh, Marion actually gave me the words to this poem about a year ago. And then a, friend, a good friend of hers, a good friend of mine as well, Merica Fuchs. I don't know if Merica's with us today, um, but she reminded me about this poem. And it is called My Mattress and I. So I'm going to read it to you again uh, so that you can remember it. Uh, Marion wrote these words. My mattress and I are cozy and pally. There are hills on the sides. I sleep in the valley. It clearly shows the shape I am in, where it is thick I am or where it is thin, I am thick, and where it is thick, I am thin. I'll miss my mattress when I am gone. It's the one thing I have made an impression on. Well, it goes without saying that Dr. Bear had an amazing career. Several people have talked about that. We'll share more about that in the fellowship hall in a moment. She was a respected doctor and surgeon. She impacted the lives of other people with the gospel of Jesus Christ in a way that few people throughout history ever have. But at the same time, like it says right in the bulletin that was handed out as you came in, it's on the back page, it says that Marion's sense of humor, her storytelling ability, and her flexibility helped her through many difficult times. She had a sense of humor. And I love this little poem that she wrote, and, and some of you have heard it before today. I'm sure many of you have. Um, I like it not just because it gives us an insight into her unique sense of humor. The, the real reason I like it is that it is so completely untrue, all right? That's why I like this poem. It's, it's not true to even suggest that Marion Bear didn't make an impact beyond what is described in this poem is a more comical idea than the poem itself. Because I can tell you that two of the many people Dr. Bear had a big impression on are my wife Lisa and me. Lisa was actually the first one to meet Marion, and it was almost 20 years ago now. And Lisa was preparing to go on a mission trip organized by International Ministries, uh, the Extreme Team. Remember that, Ray, back in the day? She was going on one of those trips to India, and uh, she had the opportunity to meet with Marion and to learn about India. And I'm pretty sure that they met, actually, at that little cafe across the street, across Taylor, right here near the church. And it was a really important moment for Lisa because she was able to just meet this amazing person who encouraged her in her life and just as she was seeking what God would have for her and how God would have her serve. And, you know, the amazing thing is that Lisa was just one of many young women and men in the United States and in India and other places as well that Dr. Bear mentored throughout the course of her life and with whom she shared her very deep faith in Jesus Christ. After about a year, a year after that, I met Dr. Bear when she did us the honor of actually praying at our wedding over at Pleasant Valley Baptist Church. Anybody ever been there before? That's where we were married. Um, but she prayed at our wedding, and it was something that I'll never forget. Around that time, Lisa and I also read her book, Medicine and Miracles Among the Multitudes. It's almost a tongue twister. It's a lot of M's. And it really influenced our own call to ministry. As David expressed a little while ago, Dr. Bear expressed one time that her plan was to share the gospel until she died. That's what, that's what you said, I think. However, through the many young people that she made an impression on, she will, in a sense, go on sharing the gospel even beyond the years of her life on earth. Amen? But I've got to tell you something. 
Can I be very honest with you? I've got to tell you something that I almost didn't come. I'm the pastor here, by the way. I'm Matt. I don't know if all of you know me, but my name is Matt, and I serve here at First Baptist. And I've been here a little over a year. And to be totally honest, I almost didn't come here at all. And it would have been Mary and Bear's fault, okay? I almost didn't come here at all. I, I was, I, I was uh, presented with the opportunity to serve this church last January, and Marion was one of the main reasons that I kind of had to take a second look. I had to think real hard about this option, this, this opportunity. Because you see, Lisa and I knew that she was a member here. And that may sound terrible, but it's not what you think. You see, I was intimidated to be the pastor of one of my heroes. I wonder if David felt that way at all ever. I was a little intimidated that Marion Bear was a member of this church. I also was realistic because I knew that she was in her 90s. And I knew that this day would come, right? I knew that this day would come. And the thought of possibly sharing the message at her memorial service seemed way too much for me. You know, when I'm uh, asked to explain who Marion Bear is, I always think of Mother Teresa. You know where I'm going? I always think of Mother Teresa. And, and people talk about Mother Teresa, and that's nice. But there's Mother Teresa, and then there's Marion Bear. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? There's Mother Teresa, and then there's Marion Bear. Now, I had not known Marion as long as many of you, but there is something deeply humbling for a pastor to have somebody like her in your church family. But if Marion's story has taught me anything with all the barriers that she broke through, with all the obstacles she had to overcome, even when it involved a flashlight doing surgery, I can't even imagine that. Um, but with her can-do attitude, the, the thing that, that I learned from her is that she could do all things, listen, through him who strengthened her. And because of that, I knew that I too could do all things through him who strengthens me. And with that in mind, it was on the day when we were candidating here at First Baptist Church, I believe it was last January, when Dr. Bear approached me and Lisa with her trademark smile and her bubbly persona. And she hugged us both and she, she welcomed us. And in that moment, any sense of being intimidated melted away immediately. And it was in that moment that we knew it was okay. It was okay to come serve at First Baptist Church alongside our hero. And I'm glad we did. Because <laughs> even in the last year of her life, she was almost 95. She didn't quite make it to 95, right? Even in the last year of her life. Did you know that Marion played a very important leadership role in this church? So I started, what was it, March 9th, I think, something like that. And, and then we all know what happened that first or second week of March, right, of 2020. Well, certain things hit the fan, didn't they? And churches closed and businesses closed and a pandemic hit. And who did I call but Dr. Marion Bear? Who else would you want to talk to, right? And I said, Marion, what's going on? You know, this was, by the time I talked to her, it was probably middle or probably the end of March. And I asked her, I said, so how long do you think this is going to go? You know, probably a few weeks, maybe a couple months. And she said, oh, no, 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 just marry it. very matter of fact. She said, no, it's going to be around for a couple of years. And I thought, you don't know what you're talking about. Give me a break. So I just politely listened to the rest of the conversation. We prayed together, and that was that. And I thought, whatever. Well, that goes to show that you should never doubt Dr. Bear. Amen? Well, Marion's favorite scripture comes from the words of the Apostle Paul to the Philippians, who said, For I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ 
who strengthens me. Wow. These are words that we've all needed this past year. Amen? And they were, they're certainly words that we need today. When Paul wrote these words, he was making the point that he was content no matter what happened to him, no matter what happened in his life. And Paul, who was also a missionary, who was a global servant, had seen God provide for him in the past, much as Marion saw God provide for her through her decades of ministry in India and through her decades of ministry here in the United States. As Pastor David pointed out, she was on the mission field here uh, pretty much as long or almost as long as she was in India. Paul had been through times of plenty and through times of want, and yet through it all, he had witnessed God's faithfulness. This was the guy who said to the Philippians, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul's joy in the Lord and his contentment were not dependent on external circumstances. No, they came from deep, deep within. No wonder that our friend Marion clung to these scriptures as she served God faithfully around the world. But Paul's words and her life story beg the question, are you content in your circumstances, whether they're good or bad? Are you content? When your circumstances are good, are you content with them, or do you just want more, more, more? You know, even prosperity can be a source of discontentment. Have you ever known somebody who has plenty and yet they're still unhappy? Health, wealth, and fame, guess what? They're not necessarily the answers to all problems. And on the flip side, when your circumstances are bad, are you content in them? whether others are able to help you or not. So the Apostle Paul expressed that he had learned to be content in whatever situation he found himself, whether good or bad. But what was the reason for such contentment? Well, that's where Marion's favorite Bible verse comes in because you see the Apostle Paul found strength to face all situations in Christ. And to quote one of Marion's favorite renderings of this verse in the contemporary English version, Christ gives me strength to face anything. What was the anything Paul was talking about? Well, it could have included living in poverty or living in abundance. It could have included being free or being imprisoned. I mean, just think of all that Paul went through in his life. Some of you know, some of you don't know, perhaps. Let's let him speak for himself. Here's, here's what it says in 2 Corinthians eleven twenty three. 23. Paul says this. He says, I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again five times. I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day on the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own people, the Jewish people, in danger from other people, the Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. How many of you know that Marion was praying for the churches all the time, both here and in India? Who is weak, Paul says, and I do not feel weak. Who is led into sin and I do not inwardly burn? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is to be praised forever, knows that I am not lying. My friends, according to Paul in Philippians 4, verse 12, it seems that he had known some good times, some times of abundance. But I'll tell you what, the rest of the New Testament... <laughs> 
shows us that uh, he knew more in terms of sheer quantity of tough times. And yet he still says, I can do all things. How? Through Christ who strengthens me. Do you find your strength in Christ? It goes without saying that our sister Marion did. But how often are we tempted to give up, to give in? You know, there's no beating around the bush. This last year has been difficult for us all. We've suffered the efforts of this pandemic when many of us would have wanted to spend time with Marion. We were unable to because of the situation. We've been separated for long periods of time from loved ones. And on top of that, we've had to say goodbye for now to one of our greatest friends, a true heroine of the faith whose life we celebrate today. These difficult situations are seriously challenging, and we can't ever underestimate the impact that they have on people like us. However, for all of us who are in the midst of those situations, I would remind you that you're not the first person who has been through trials. Paul faced trials. Life was no easy street for Mary and Bear either. But you know what? God got her through. Amen? And at the end of the day, no matter what happened to her, no matter who told her she couldn't do it, she was able to say boldly, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My prayer for you, no matter what difficulties you face, is that you would be able to say the same thing, that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And what an amazing source of strength he is. When it comes to having the right attitude and facing the challenges of this life, our sister Marion is a great role model to all of us, and she always will be. But I think she would be the first to tell you that there is one who is far greater. And his name is Jesus, the one who died for her and for us on the cross, the one who rose again on the third day. And because of what he has done, we can do all things through him who gives us strength. You know, it was referred to earlier, and many of us have heard the story of how Marion became a Baptist by mistake. A Baptist by mistake. You know, she moved here from Henderson, Nebraska. I used to live in Nebraska for a short time. I remember hearing of Henderson. I don't think I ever went through there. But they moved here from Henderson, Nebraska. Uh, she and her brother Irwin and uh, their parents. They had some connections out here. They were looking for a better life. Uh, there at the, towards the end of the Depression era. So they, they set out to Portland, and, 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 and once here, Sunday came along, and, and the family had to go to church, and there's always the question, what church do you go to? They had been a part of the Mennonite community out there, and there was nothing like that in downtown Portland, so they figured, let's try out the Methodists. Mom had a background in that, and uh, so they went to give the Methodist church a try, or so they believed at the time. And they thought that Pastor Wilson there at the Methodist church was very good. But as Marion put it, he kept saying, Baptist this and Baptist that, until finally they realized they had gone to this church, First Baptist Church, by mistake. But they liked it enough to go back the next week, to come back, I think, for the evening service. And as I understand it, Ms. Uh, Dr. Wilson stepped off of the platform and gave them an invitation to accept Christ as their Savior. And here's what he said to them. He said, it doesn't matter if your parents are Christians. It doesn't matter if your family is Christian. The question is, are you a Christian? Have you accepted the Lord yourself. Well, apparently Marion and her brother looked at each other. They realized they had never done that. Uh, then they looked at their father and their mother, and Marion asked, Daddy, may I go up? Mama, may I go up? And they nodded at them. And so they stood up. And soon as the two kids stood up, Mama and Papa stood up too. And according to Marion, she says, we all four went forward to become Baptists by mistake on purpose. And they were all baptized by immersion, I presume, in that tank right back there behind me, on Christmas Sunday of 1940, becoming Baptists by mistake but by God's 
purpose. And of course, we know the rest is history. My question is this. What made such a small in stature and unassuming person have such a huge impression on the world? What made such a humble woman of God so great? Why was Marion Bear able to accomplish so much in her life? At least in part, it was because of what happened in this room on that day when her family became Baptists by mistake. You know, Marion wasn't afraid of life on this earth ending. I was very fortunate to be able to visit her with our mutual friend, Marika, just a few days before she passed. Even in her last days, she had a smile on her face. Probably not all the time, but she did for those brief moments when I was there. And uh, I had an opportunity to read scripture to her. And I wasn't reading to her, I was reading with her, because as I read, she was actually mouthing the words. And that was so cool, because it indicated to me that she knew them here. You see, this great woman of God had the hope of eternal life, the hope of Jesus, deep within her heart. There's one final scripture I want to share with you today. It emerges from Jesus' conversation with a woman named Martha in the wake of the death of her brother, whose name was Lazarus. And he said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, Martha replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. My friends, if Marion Bear had any impression on you, if she had any impact on you, it's quite possibly true that you already know this yourself. You already know that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, that he's the Son of God who came into the world to save us. But I got to tell you, (laughs) I don't think it would honor the memory of our friend if I didn't echo the challenge of her pastor from 1940. And so I would tell you all, sitting right there, it doesn't matter if your parents are Christians. It doesn't matter if your family is Christian. The question is, are you a Christian? Have you accepted the Lord yourself. Well, have you? I'm pretty confident that Marion would want you to do so. And so you too can accept the love of God today, just in this room, just like she and her family did so long ago, and how it has impacted the generations of your family as well, and people all around this world, so that you too can say with confidence, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's pray. Dear God, we are humbled in your presence today because we recognize that we are celebrating the life of a woman who for so many of us is a hero, who really did make a huge impression on our lives and on our world. And Lord, we are reminded that she was more than just a doctor, (laughs) although that's no small thing. She was more than just a surgeon, although that is no small thing. Lord, she was a preacher of the gospel. She shared the message of new life in Jesus Christ everywhere she went. And so, Lord, in this moment, for the one who recognizes that their faith needs to be their faith, It's not just about their family. It's not just about their parents. But Lord, for the one who needs to accept you, to believe in you for the first time today, that you are the way, the truth, and the life, that you are the resurrection and the life, Lord, I pray that you would speak to them deeply within their heart, that they would 
accept you in faith, that they would accept your forgiveness, that they would walk in newness of life, as Marion and her family did so long ago from this very room. Dear God, may we all, like our beloved sister Marion, be able to boldly proclaim the words of the song that we'll sing in just a moment. O oh, love that will not let me go, I rest my weary soul in thee. I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer, fuller be. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, the one who strengthens us, and through whom we can do anything you call us to do, Lord, we say, Amen. Please tolerate a short poem entitled, Thanks to God for Marion Bear. Dear God above, who loves us so, gave Marion grace for her to go to foreign lands far o'er the sea, where eager souls found there would be a blessed master who would save through Marion's work, who freely gave her mind and body to their land and tirelessly with steady hand, provided healing and God's word. We thank you, God, for Dr. Bear, whose special gift, your word, to share. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we look back upon the many ways our dear sister Marianne blessed thousands with her excellent skills as a surgeon. 
We thank you, Lord, that these skills were joined by Christian compassion for each patient. And we thank you for her congenial ministry to her Indian colleagues who long remember and dwell on the abundant ways she touched their lives. Beside these ministries abroad, we have been blessed upon her return here as she promoted mission commitment in the homeland through the leadership in this local church and through the American Baptist Foreign Mission Society. So we are celebrating the unique and dedicated medical and spiritual ministries of Dr. Marion Olita Bear. Lord, you extended her life and she used it so well, giving you the glory. And now, O oh Lord, we celebrate her arrival in your very presence, a fond remembrance here, a brighter light over there in glory. Comfort her family, blessing them, and all we who remember Dr. Marion Bear with joy in our hearts. And now may the grace of God and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Norm. Well, I do want to extend a, a heartfelt gratitude to the family, to Terry, and to David and Mary as well. Thank you for uh, letting us be a part of this celebration. And also, of course, to you, church family, because you have been family to Marion for all these years as well. And so uh, we are just so grateful for this opportunity to be together. As we close, uh, just some practical announcements. Um, after the organ postlude, if you're comfortable doing so, there will be a time of fellowship. You'll just want to go out that door right over there. And um, that's just where you can also exit the building if you'd prefer not to be a part of that fellowship time. Um, and after the organ postlude ends, uh, we'll, uh, we'll begin a time of sharing for those who would like to share memories. But whether you stay or go, I invite you to receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.